Hi, I'm Chris Stepanuk, coordinator for the Volunteer Stream Monitoring Program for the State of Wisconsin. I'm often asked to comment on specific data that stream monitors collect. For example, a monitor might say, the dissolved oxygen in, in my stream is 12 milligrams per liter. Is that good? And that's a tough question to answer, since data generally can't be classified as good or bad. However, in the following segment, I'll give you some insight into the range of data stored in the WAVE database and some idea of what you might find in your stream. And we also hope you'll find it interesting and useful to view the stream ecology sections of this DVD series to learn more about what your numbers mean. Every stream has baseline turbidity, and organisms that live there are adapted to that level of turbidity. It's when that level of turbidity changes for days, months, or years that trouble can occur for the organisms in the stream. In general, when turbidity is less than 10 NTUs, organisms in the stream are healthy and not stressed due to turbidity. When turbidity levels increase to hundreds and thousands of NTUs, organisms living in the stream may be negatively affected or there may be a shift in the types of organisms found in the stream. Between 1997 and 2004, 62% of over 2,300 turbidity samples collected in the WAVE program showed turbidity values of less than 10 NTU, and almost 90% of samples showed turbidity values of less than 40 NTUs. Temperature and dissolved oxygen are directly linked. At certain water temperatures, a certain amount of oxygen can be dissolved in the water. The amount of oxygen dissolved in the stream can be measured in percent saturation. Generally, fish and macroinvertebrates are healthy when saturation of dissolved oxygen is between 80 and 120 percent. In the WAVE database of over 1,500 samples, dissolved oxygen percent saturation falls between 80 and 120 percent 66 percent of the time. 18 percent of the time, dissolved oxygen saturation is less than 80 percent, and 16 percent of the time, dissolved oxygen saturation is greater than 120 percent. The range of water temperatures in the database falls between zero in winter months when it's freezing to nearly 90 degrees Fahrenheit in summer months. Stream flow will vary by size of stream and the amount of rainfall, as well as watershed characteristics. It's important to measure because it helps us understand other parameters that are being monitored. For instance, turbidity often increases with stream flows, so by monitoring stream flow we can see if turbidity was affected by changes in the amount of water in the stream. Monitoring flow also gives us an idea of the general size of a stream. Of the 781 flow measurements made by WAVE volunteers between 1997 and 2004, most range from less than 1 cubic foot per second to about 250 cubic feet per second. Be aware of strong currents in deep water at higher flow levels. The possible range for habitat scores is 13 to 52. It's important to compare sites scores between years or compare habitat scores only within small watersheds because various geologic conditions affect the habitat assessment scores. In the WAVE database, habitat assessments made between 1997 and 2004 showed a range of scores for rocky habitat sites from 22 to 52, and for soft bottom habitats, scores ranged from 21 to 51. The biotic index score is a water quality rating of poor, fair, good, or excellent. Biotic index scores ranged from 1 to 3.5 for 721 biotic indices determined between 1997 and 2004. 18% showed poor water quality, 53% indicated fair water quality, and 29% indicated good water quality. No sites were recorded as excellent. However, this doesn't mean there are no streams in Wisconsin with excellent water quality. It's more likely due to how we calculate our biotic index. Because we only look at presence and absence of organisms, and those organisms that can tolerate polluted conditions can also live in clean streams, their presence in good water quality streams brings down the overall rating. For instance, if we find a variety of organisms representing all four categories, including stoneflies, caddisflies, scuds, and bloodworms, we get a biotic index score of 2.5, indicating fair water quality. But if we only find caddisflies, we end up with a biotic index score of 3, indicating good water quality. Regardless, for other reasons mentioned in this DVD series, macroinvertebrates are still an important indicator of water quality, and this biotic index allows us to make a general assessment of water quality in streams and rivers. Data I've mentioned are stored in an online database. Anyone with access to the internet can search the database. However, only registered users can enter data to help ensure the system contains only high-quality data. 
To access the database, go to this website, then click on the Monitoring Database button, then click on the Enter the Database button, and then you'll be able to search by county, site, or stream name. If you still have questions about your data, contact your local coordinator or view the resources section of this DVD series.